Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and this is the Viver Handheld Thermal Imager. It's an outstanding unit. This is the this model is the two or the SC240M. They make uh, two other versions, one above this that has a Wi-Fi connection, and one below it that does not have the uh, visible camera, visible light camera in it. But this is the middle of the road one, which uh, is an outstanding camera. Just wonderful. I'm going to get it warmed up here. I did a review on the Klein a long time ago. This is actually a solid little unit, but the graphical processor inside this thing, or the GPU, is, is pretty slow. So it stutters a lot. And also, even though these screens are not huge difference in size, this is actually a huge difference. This is about uh, 10,000 pixels. This is about, this is over 43,000 pixels. So this is more than four times the resolution of the Klein. Uh, this uses a USB-C rechargeable uh, internal battery, and it comes with a, uh, a micro SD card, but a real brand name one, which is good. This is a Kingston. Kind of surprised me when I saw that. 64 gigabyte. Uh, that comes with this. It's not some no-name inexpensive one. So they, you know, they, it's a serious unit. It's really designed for work, um, which means that you should actually have a uh, quality um, SD card in there. So what do I have? I've got a uh, screen that with some information. I've got my minimum temperature. I've got my current temperature, my, uh, my scale over here. I've got a targeting point. Um, I'm gonna turn this on. This is a little Olight uh, baton. You can see it in my hand here. Uh, if I just turn it on regular, it looks, it's lighting up, but why? Well, that's because it, it has been on and it's warm, but I'm gonna run it up to turbo here. And what you're gonna see is almost like a flame coming out of this thing. But what's cool about it is I can move that and the flame stays over here and a new flame starts. Essentially what you're looking at, so a way to think about these sometimes, is you're looking back in time. So um, I'm gonna put my finger down right here and when I take it away, there's where my finger was a while ago. Um, have fun with these. We'll, get, we'll take it outside in a moment and have some fun with it. Uh, but if you're doing anything that involves friction um, or you're curious about the uh, exact temperature of an area or you want to kind of see what the temperature distribution is, how the temperature is, is moving away with heat sinks um, or distributed over an area, great trailer axles, wheel bearings, Things like that are common use. Plus, you can do a, an audit of your uh, your insulation or around doors, windows, uh, heat coming out of uh, uh, furnace ducts, even the furnace ducts themselves, and of course, um, you know, monitoring your dog in the evening, which I'll show you. Uh, what do we have here? This is the interface. We've got a trigger up here to make movies, take pictures. Um, but if I push the center button, it brings up a little set of menus down near the bottom. Um, and I won't go through all of them, but I can set up how I want it to target, what things mean, you know, et cetera, cold spots, green. Um, if I go over the view mode, um, this is where I can go into different, um, different options. The PIP or picture in a picture is pretty cool because sometimes it's hard to see exactly what's happening. Uh, because you're looking in, through false color, which means if the temperature is the same, you don't see a difference. Or if the temperature is below a certain point, or they're all below, it's all the same color, even if they're different items. So the PIP, or the picture in a picture, actually may allow you to more easily see into something, uh, because you have the actual uh, visible light digital camera reference. The digital camera, by the way, is about 2 megapixels. Um, Keep going. I can choose palettes. I've got it set for iron. You can choose the different palettes simply because all of these are fake colors. This is reading infrared temperatures. Infrared is much longer wavelength than visible light, so there is no there is no color. It's made the the computer inside here is manufacturing a color, so of course it can give you the option to choose whatever color it is that you want. I'm going to go with iron. And then last, the settings. There's all kinds of different ones. You can set uh, alarms. You can set different temperature units, um, different scales. Uh, this does run a couple of different scales. I, you can see uh, that's because there's sort of a fixed color palette. So if your number of degrees goes outside 
the number of colors that you can present, then you can't actually show um, a temperature difference. But anyway, let's go back and play around with this thing. Um, one thing uh, I like about it is I can quickly take a picture. So the moment I want something, say my hand, I can pull the trigger, which I just did. Um, and it, this one, it's starting a movie. I can stop the movie. I can save the movie uh, if I want. Um, or I can also take a picture. Let me save that movie. There we go. So I just snapped a picture. Um, if, I, if I click the trigger fast, then I get the photo. If I click it a little slower, you can see there's a, a movie button starting. So I've got to, whoops, um, be quick on that. There we go. Save it, of course. Uh, anyway, let's head outside. Um, but first I want to thank Viva for sending me this. They actually wanted me to look at this uh, 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 work light down here. It's an LED, it's a pair of LEDs. I'm going to do a separate video on it. And I thought, you know, I, I caught I transcended those. I used to have a set of halogen craftsmen. I used them for all kinds of things and finally got rid of them. I thought they were a fire hazard. Sometimes things would touch them or land on them and they'd you know, start burning or paint would get on the front end of them. I just thought they were, you know, not where, where I should be. They sent me these. I plugged them in and I realized my whole life with battery powered lights uh, has been underwhelming. I'm glad they did because getting back to some actual plug-in, you know, 120 volt LED lights that just blast out a ton of light is going to make uh, a lot of jobs much easier than rolling my little Milwaukee's around. But anyway, let's head outside and take a look at what that thing can do. So what we're looking at here is um, a an evening shot of my dog. Uh, he's walking around. It's actually pitch black outside. I've got the uh, Viver camera on the right and you can see the, whoops, sorry about that. Hmm. I guess that's why he's outside. But anyway, there's a little green blinking dot, not, on, not the one on the camera, but that's actually finding the cold spot. It's gonna check that out just like a dog. Um, but anyway, there's a green flashing light on the left. That's my dog. He's got a collar on and I turned on a green flashing light so I could see him. But you can't see him because he's simply not visible. There's no external light. But through the camera, it's quite obvious. There, I just took a picture of him. And you can see that he's, uh, you know, sniffing the ground. I don't know if he can see. I, he can't see. There's no light. They, they can't see in the dark, but he's probably got uh, some other senses going. And then you can see I've got trees. Anyway, so back to this guy. Uh, it is not inexpensive. Um, I have used one. The most expensive one of these things I used was about $50,000. And I was at an astrobiology workshop in Yellowstone Park and we were using them to inspect some of the different hot pools for various reasons. Um, I like this for the simplicity, but if you were gonna jump up you know, another little bit of money. Definitely look at these. The prices, I don't know if they can get much cheaper, um, much less expensive. I've used ones that plug into my cell phone. I might explore those again. I had a Flare originally and uh, used it with some different software and it worked great, but the battery life was so low. The battery life on this thing, uh, I think, let me double check, but I think we're looking at around uh, nine hours is it or 11 hours 11 hours running this guy which is huge um, and then just a couple hours to charge it back up about four hours from dead um, using the USB-C um, but just an outstanding light just an amazing uh, I mean an outstanding camera just really fun to use um, the one thing I wish it did have is a way to attach a lanyard I just worry about dropping it, so I've got this that I can just screw in. I'm going to get a little smaller one, use uses a quarter twenty um, socket there, just so I could slip a uh, um, a lanyard on my um, on my wrist in case um, you know there was a chance I was going to drop it for whatever reason. Just because it's it's a pricey little instrument, um, but it also does allow us to see the invisible, so definitely worthwhile. And with that, dock out.